Max, is there any chance Boston can extend the series? Yeah, there's a chance. Sure, there's a chance. I like Cleveland to win and close it out, but I think if there's a chance Boston can get one more game. Why do I say that? First of all, they've shown a lot of pluck in the, in the last couple games on the road at Cleveland, right? I mean, they came all the way back where they were being slaughtered after being slaughtered in the first game, and it, then, then, then an avalanche in the second game. It was like, there's no chance. Then in the third game, they're losing big again, and they come all the way back to win that game. That's big. And then they had a third quarter lead in game four. So they've shown that they've made great uh, strides since the first two games. And unfortunately uh, for Isaiah, who I love as a player, it coincided with his absence. And defensively, they've become a better team as a result. I think we've all known that. And other guys have stepped up offensively. So it's possible. But in order for that to happen, a lot of things have to go right for the Celtics. All those bench players and, and Marcus Smart and Olenek and all these guys, all their shots have to be falling. The bench has to be productive. LeBron has to have another off night and then also not come alive in the fourth quarter. Like, LeBron couldn't have played much worse or looked much slower or worse, and he may have been sick, and that makes sense, in the first half of game four, right? I mean, even halfway through the third quarter, you're like, what's going on with LeBron? And then in the fourth quarter, he went bananas. So even if LeBron, it's not just that LeBron has to have an off game and all the Celtics have to be hitting their shots, then LeBron can't come alive at any point in the game. There's just a lot of stuff going against the Celtics here. But at home, given how they played the last two games, it's not impossible that they steal one more before the Cavs close them out. Well, it's not impossible, but it's highly unlikely. And I think highly unlikely is definitely applicable here. I don't believe the Boston Celtics are going to win this game. A matter of fact, I think they will lose this game, and I think they will lose this game convincingly. I do not think it's going to come down to the wire. I think that the Cleveland Cavaliers have figured them out, and they're going to run away with this game in the second half, and this series will be over. I think they've been, you know, their level of, in of incentive has elevated due to the Golden State Warriors having clinched their series. We all know that the final starts next Thursday no matter what. But I think if you're the Cleveland Cavaliers, from a subliminal perspective, you want to send a message that you're coming. You want us? Here we come. You got us. We are the reigning defending NBA champions. We have what you want. We are the ones with the best player in the world. And from what I'm being told, Kevin Durant is determined not to be demure or timid in any way. He's going to go right at LeBron. LeBron because he's heard all the noise about how LeBron is his kryptonite even though he's averaged 29 points against LeBron's in his career as LeBron has averaged against him but in the end what it comes down to is this you're the Cleveland Cavaliers you want to make sure that you send the message that here you come because Golden State's waiting and I think that when the Boston Celtics are a team in your way challenged offensively without the services of Isaiah Thomas although much much better defensively I think if you're the Cleveland Cavaliers you figured them out and as a result you'll be better prepared for them than you certainly were for game three and obviously well, were to a lesser degree for game four I think they close it out and I think they win by anywhere from 15 to 20 tonight well, you're right about them uh, likely winning. We're on the same page about that. And you're even right about their motivation. And they're the better team. So, as I said, things have to go wrong for the Cavs. And, and things have to go right for the Celtics in order for the Celtics to squeeze, like, a victory out at Boston in this series right now and extend it to six games where they would surely lose. I mean, they ain't taking this to seven games. But I actually think the Celtics are more motivated than the Cavs right now, Stephen A., because think of how... They were perceived, the Celtics, after game two. It's over. They're not close. People like you and I who were like, hey, maybe the Celtics are a year away, could be. Other people were saying, depending on who they get in the offseason, depending how LeBron looks next year, maybe it could be the Celtics. We're saying, oh, no, no, no. They're not a year away. They're far away. In fact, they have to consider the construction of their roster even. That's how far away they are. They're being humiliated by this Cavs team at home. Worse in the game two than in game one. Game two was actually the worst playoff beating, especially in a conference finals. I can remember watching in my lifetime. It was at one point the Cavs were a play away. They didn't get there, but they were a play away from making it 70-something to 20-something. Think about that in an NBA conference finals. And so it was like, that's it. The Celtics' future looks very different than we thought. They, Danny Ainge needs to reconsider all these things. And then game three happened. And game three showed you what they could be defensively without Isaiah. 
They have all this stuff coming in the future, not only the number one pick, but the Nets pick next year. Who knows? That could be the number one pick. They have all this draft talent stocked on their roster. Maybe they want to move some of it, get something better. They have Isaiah to a very cheap deal. He could also be used on the trading block if they want. They have all this stuff and they came back on the Cavs and they made game four interesting for much of it. If they can somehow win a game five and take it to game six or even lose a close one, in other words, they're very motivated to play their very best, even maybe beyond normal, then the future of the Celtics franchise will be perceived, even by the Celtics, as much different than if they get their butts kicked in Game 5 and Game 3 just looks like an aberration, right? Like, uh, it, it, it's a big, big difference in terms of the fortunes of their team and franchise and the way they view themselves. So I actually think the Celtics are more motivated than the Cavs right now. They're not more motivated than the Cavs. I think that they yeah, I get your point about them getting annihilated in game two. And as a result, they want to make sure that they don't embarrass themselves. They're highly motivated to make sure this is a competitive contest. They certainly want to win. But the Cleveland Cavaliers have been motivated not just by history, not just by LeBron James chasing ghosts, but now by the owner of the Golden State Warriors saying we want y'all. That matters. And those kind of things are the kind of uh, the kind the of things that ultimately motivate a champion. The, sh the Boston Celtics are on the come up. Their future is very, very bright. A matter of fact, they're going to be bright for years and years to come. But this is not their moment. This is Cleveland's moment. And Cleveland knows it and Cleveland senses it. And their mentality is let's Let's go in there and let's finish our business and do what we want to do. Now, you've got people like my boy Charlie Mack and others who are of the mindset. That's what that's Will Smith's boy. He's of the mindset that the Celtics are going to survive tonight and they're going to do some things. It won't happen. They can dream. It's a wrap. The series ends tonight right. and convincingly, but in the fourth quarter.